Hey guys, what's going on? Prelimin here. You guys know what to do. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Today, we are going to be previewing the Leicester versus Chelsea game. I believe we're away again for this fixture. And it's going to be a tough one. Of course, we know Leicester um, are, are a good team this season. They're really pushing it up at the table. Uh, Chelsea on, you know, still on the back of some bad form, even though we won at Morecambe, we won at Fulham. Leicester is now a big test because they are a much better team than Fulham and Morecambe, respectively. Although, you know, no disrespect to them, it was difficult to get the win, especially against Fulham. Um, even with the red card, they sat back a fair bit and caused us problems on the counter attack. So, this Leicester City side, we're gonna have to take it up a notch to get another win here. Um, of course, this game does come off the back of, you know, we played on the weekend, on Saturday, I believe it was, and now we're playing again on Tuesday. Um, not much break in between, which could cause problems. It could be a bit of a problem when it comes to the starting lineup as well. You know, certain players might not be fit, and that's completely understandable. That is a fairly quick turnaround. So, this game, obviously, we win this. We're looking a lot stronger compared to where we have been recently. We lose this. And I really do worry for Frank Lampard's job. If we draw this game, you know, whilst you consider where they are on the table, it might not be a bad point, but it's Leicester. We should be beating them with Chelsea. With our players on the pitch, we should be able to beat a Leicester team. So, looking at the form of both teams quickly, let's go into this. Leicester City sit, sit in sixth position, as you can see highlighted here. They have um, their past results going left to right, loss, win, draw, draw, win, win. So they're coming off the back of two Premier League wins, one against Newcastle, which was pretty hard fought out. I think it's a good Southampton side, albeit Southampton struggling at the moment, as you can see down here. But Southampton this season have been good, so they've done well to get points there. Chelsea sitting in 11th place off a loss, win, loss, draw, loss, win. Of course, it's not counting other like competitions, so we did win against Morecambe, so there would be another win in there if we're counting all competitions, but that's how it is. So we picked up seven points in our last six games, which is not good enough. Leicester picking up 11, which is more so where we should be, but realistically, we should be looking to be up here. Right next to Man City, Everton, Man United, even Arsenal. You know, they've been the joke team this season. They're picking up points now. So we cannot afford to be dropping any here. It's going to be a difficult game, as I mentioned. How this play plays out, I'm not too sure. Leicester style this season. It's, it's, you know, it's fairly standard as to what we know about Leicester. Can Chelsea counteract that? Are Leicester going to play to our weaknesses in that they will sit back and just play on the counter-attack trying to get their you know their, their fast players down the wings um jamie vardy being unleashed and such is that how they're going to play maybe or will they just stick to their guns and think that they can beat us that way let's move on to the formation quickly though this is what i'm going with and i'm very i'm very unsure on the formation for this game i don't I, I don't know if Thiago Silva will be fit enough to play this game, given that he uh, played against Fulham in the week with Rudiger, I believe it was, next to him. Zuma sat out on that one. Of course, I've gone for Edouard Mendy in goal. He sticks there for me. Reese James at right back coming back in. He should be fit for this one. Everyone's fit bar Kante. Christensen is eligible again, but I do not trust Christensen in my team. So, um, yeah, Kante suspended. Reese James starts at right back. Thiago Silva and Kurt Zuma for me. Kurt will be good to come back in. Um, Thiago Silva, if he's not fit to play, you know, he's an aging player. If he's not feeling recovered from the previous game, I think I would be putting in either Rudiger again or, as silly as it might seem at the moment, Tomori. He uh, is on the brink of moving to AC Milan, so it might seem very weird to, you know, put him into the team. I'm sure he still cares about Chelsea. He wants to give his best for Chelsea, but. There's a part of me that thinks, you know, is it wise to put a player in that his head isn't totally at the club at the moment? He's thinking about transfers. His mate, his camp might be negotiating a deal away from our club as we speak. So it's a bit of a weird one. I'm hoping these two are fit to play them. Ben Chilwell, of course, at left back, he stays in for me. Um, I don't think Emerson gets in above him at the moment. Then, as you can see, the two sort of holding midfielders, I guess, but I'm just treating them as general centre mids. Mason Mount, of course, gets in this team. Hopefully, he can net another goal in this fixture. And then Billy Gilmore, I think he deserves a start. I don't think you can really, you know, you, you can make a case for Jorginho. I think he was a passenger in the game against Fulham. He didn't really do enough for me. 
Kovacic hasn't been in the best form as of recent, you know, in these losses and draws that we've been having, he's been not doing his role good enough. He has been losing possession, he has not been effective when he's been on the ball, and it's caused us problems. So I think Billy Gilmore, not only is he in coming into the team, he'll be ready to prove himself, he'll be fast, dynamic, hard in the tackle against this Leicester team. He's, you know, he's got that sort of young drive and ambition to get in ahead of Kovacic, to get in ahead of Jorginho, and that should spur him on to have a good game. So I'm trusting in Billy Gilmore for my team. Kai Havertz at the sort of cam roll, it could work. Again, though, it could be problematic. We've seen him when he has played a bit like Jorginho, as I mentioned, be a bit of a passenger. He doesn't grab the game. He doesn't, you know, force passes to happen. He doesn't create enough for me at the moment. Um, so it could be a risk putting him into this team. Um, I, as I mentioned, when he got that goal against Morecambe, I believe he seemed to be playing, you know, a lot further into the box, a little more of a second striker sort of role, and that's what I'd want him to do coming off of Tammy Abraham. I would love to see him, you know, Tammy in the box, hopefully winning headers. I could absolutely see the case for Giroud starting this one as well, though, because of his uh, aerial dominance. But Tammy in the box, you know, when he's in there trying to win headers, he can absolutely try and hit the, hit the ball on target but if he drops it back and Kai Havertz is you know approaching in the box and can volley it in header it in whatever he needs to do with it that is what I would like to see out of Kai Havertz in this game playing off of these three players up in front of him Pulisic on the left side Calm Hudson Adore on the right side playing off them and sort of you know floating in between the space getting into a little area where if he receives the ball with a good pass he can have a strike at goal we know he's got a great strike on him when he unleashes it He's currently just not trying it enough, though, and he's not being anywhere near uh, proactive enough and getting into the near the goal of the opposition. So that's what I want to see from Kai Havertz. It'll be a big game for him to prove himself yet again to Chelsea fans because I think he needs to a little bit. You know, whilst we're entitled to you know judge him and all this sort of stuff, he and and some of it may be unfair. He also needs to prove to us that he was worth the money we've spent on him. And yes, he's young. Yes, we'll give him time. Absolutely. But he does need to start doing something on the pitch to make it show that he's worthwhile and worth investing in. So this team absolutely should be able to get past Leicester defensively from you know the bottom half. Should be very solid. The midfield looks like it can contribute defensively and definitely attacking. Gilmore striking balls forward. We've seen him when he's on the ball. He likes to move the ball forward, which is what we lack sometimes. Kalmans and Adoy absolutely deserves a start for me. We've seen him perform well in his last few appearances. Deserves the start. Ziyech could get into this team, I wouldn't be opposed to it, my only problem with him is he's a little bit of a, a lazy, might be a bit a bit rude, a bit disrespectful to him, but he does sort of, you know, his pressing isn't as intent as Calum hudson Adoy's has been recently, um, you can see the body language a little bit when the ball goes past him and he's just a bit like, ugh, shrug of the shoulders like, damn it, and you know, you don't want to see that, you don't want your teammate being, ugh, shrugging his shoulders and bad body language, you want them to see them fighting, to be pushing for that ball, and that spurs everyone else on the pitch to do it as well, and Callum offers that. Uh, as well as his creative talent, being able to cross in, you know, pick out a good pass, score. You know, we saw the pass from Mason Mount around this area over to Calmus and when he scored previously and, and scored a beautiful goal um, this season. That was very well done. So more of that. Pulisic, you know, he's not at his best at the moment. He's getting back into his form. We've seen that, you know, there was a, a period where I see it how, you know what Lampard's doing to pull, um, to Calmus and at the moment? He's, you could probably argue Callum Hudson-Odoi deserved to start the last few matches, but he hasn't. And he's keeping him out of the team and really driving and building up that hunger and desire to sort of be like, you know, up to the manager, to Frank, being like, screw you, man. Like, I'm putting everything in. I'm doing everything right. Why aren't I starting? And it's pushing Callum to do better and better and better. He did that with Pulisic for a while. And people were questioning, why isn't Pulisic playing? Why isn't Pulisic playing? He's, he's on good form when he shows, you know, he's coming off the bench. He, he's in good form. And that led to Pulisic going on a hell of a streak where he was scoring and assisting like crazy. I think that's what we're seeing with Callum and we need to see that with Pulisic again. So if he is dropped for this game, I don't think he will be. I could understand why to make him sort of, you know, switch on because he's not quite there at the moment. Timo Werner getting in this team, I could see, you know, us playing him there. But the fact that we can't afford to miss chances against a good Leicester team makes me think I want someone a little more prolific in Tammy Abraham there. 
And of course, Tammy offers the, the, the natural sort of poacher attributes. He's good right in front of the goal, around that 6 to 18 yard box. He's good in that area. He needs to improve on his heading um, skills. Hopefully we can see some improvement there. And we'll just see him generally having a good game, good pressing from the front, good energy and all that sort of stuff. So this video was a little bit late. I'm, a, I'm sorry that it's come out so late just before the game. Um, I will be doing a match reaction as well, so make sure you hang around for that one. Let's go Chelsea. My prediction is going to be a 2-1 win for Chelsea. I think Leicester will score. They're a good team at the moment and I think we'll hopefully be able to get a couple of goals. If I'm going to predict goal scorers, I'm going to say Mason Mount gets another one this week and Pulisic maybe gets back among the scoring, something like that. And then, of course, Leicester, let's just say it's Jamie Vardy that's scoring. I'm not too bothered. I'd rather he didn't. Um, yeah, that's the end of the video, guys. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye.